If you're making a game, you probably want to have some input action icons on screen. But what if you make a game and you're not sure what the input is going to be? Are people going to use a controller or maybe a mouse and keyboard? Well, you can make a system that switches seamlessly between the two based on what the latest input was done through. So when people are playing with the controller, they'll see controller input buttons. And when they're playing with mouse and keyboard, they'll see mouse and keyboard ones. Let's get into how to make this because it's really not that difficult. First things first, you're going to need the common UI plugin for Unreal. So go up here to plugins or in your edit plugins and look for common UI. I already have it enabled. This should come with the engine by default, but it's not enabled. So you'll need to enable it. And after enabling it, you need to restart the engine for it to take effect. Once you've done that, we can get on with actually making this system. So let's go into the content folder here. I already made some common UI tutorial before. So that's why I had it enabled. And that's what all of these things are. You can ignore those for the time being. Let's make a new folder here for UI inputs. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to import two quick icons that I have made, which are a C icon and a P icon, which are not properly named because this is supposed to be called X icon. Anyway, when you open those up, we'll change this from texture group from world into UI because we're going to be using it in the UI. And you see that also fixes up the preview right away. So same for this one, we want to use it in the UI. Next up, we're going to be making a couple of assets. The first of which is going to be a data table. So we're going to go to miscellaneous and we want to add a common UI input action data table. Let's call that input data table. This is going to hold all of the input actions that you want in your entire game. So let's just show you one for example. So we're going to add a input action and we'll call this row something like input test action. Then the display name is what your player is going to see if you at any point in time use the name of this row in your game. So let's make that something different. It's a test. We're not actually going to be using this, so it doesn't really matter too much. Now, this is where the important bit starts. Keyboard input type info and default gamepad input type info. So this is where you just put in what keys corresponds to this action. In our case, uh, I made an icon for a P. So that's going to be the P key on the keyboard. And I made an icon for an X. So that's going to be the bottom face button for a PlayStation controller. Not specifically a PlayStation controller because it'll work on any gamepad. It's kind of hard to differentiate between normal gamepads and PlayStation controllers, which Unreal is a little bit iffy with PlayStation controllers natively. But I digress. So you set up your keyboard key or your mouse button key and your gamepad key in the corresponding menus here. And that's all you have to do in the data table itself for every single key input that you want to have, of course. Then we're going to go make a blueprint class and we'll base that off of the common input based controller data. And we'll call this one keyboard data and we'll duplicate that over and make that gamepad data. Let's open up the gamepad data first. And here we see something very similar. So we want to set a input type here first, which is going to be a gamepad for us. Then we want to choose the gamepad name. Depending on how many SDKs and stuff you've got, you might have multiple gamepad names here for multiple possible gamepads. Uh, usually, this will just say generic for generic Windows-based gamepads. So we go with generic. Then again, the display name is what the player will see, this thing being called. And the platform name uh, we'll call Windows for now. And we'll call this controller. Then we can put in a controller texture specifically for if you want to show the controller in an image. We're not going to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to go down into the input brush data map and we're going to add a new element to that. For which we're going to set the exact same gamepad key that we just set in this data table. So that would be face bottom button. The engine and the plugin will automatically see that, oh, wait a second, this is the uh, face button bottom that corresponds to this row. So these two things will automatically be linked together. You don't need to manually like reference them to each other locally. And then we can set a brush for that. So we can use an image and for that we'll use this image here. 
And now this image is linked to this button, which is then linked to this action. And we'll do the exact same thing with the keyboard data. So sometimes when you open it up, it might show you the event graph. You can just simply close that. That's not too useful. We're not going to be using that. For this one, the input type is going to stay as mouse and keyboard. And we simply need to add an input brush data map. So we're going to add an element to that. For this one, we want to make sure that it corresponds to the key that we put in before as well. So it's going to be a P key. And for the image, that's going to be the P icon that I've made. Now, we need to open up the project settings and do a couple of things here. So first things first, we're going to come up here into the common input settings under the game tab. And there we're going to scroll down to the windows options. You can set this on a per platform basis. So if you wanted to behave differently on a Mac versus a Windows versus iOS or HoloLens or whatever platforms you all have, you can totally do that. But we're going to stick with Windows for now. So we're going to go to the controller data and add two elements to that array. And that's going to be our gamepad data and our keyboard data. Then we're going to come back down here through engine and we want to set the general settings. We want to find the game viewport class client and we want to set that to common game viewport client this is added when you enable the common ui plugin and now we can make a new user widget as you are probably used to doing and we'll call that uh widget blueprint input icons i'll start by adding a canvas panel and then we're going to add a common action widget and i'll just put that somewhere on screen where it's easy to see uh, let's make that 150 by 150 in size so that it's quite big for us to see and anchor that to the center of the screen. We have a couple of options here under the common action widgets and the most important one being our input actions. So we can add an element to that and in there we have a data table that we can select which is going to be the data table that we've made and then from that data table we need to pick a row that corresponds to the action that we want to display. So if you have a data table with a hundred different actions, you want to pick the right one for this UI element at this time. We only have one, so it's a pretty easy thing to do, really. Now, you might need to restart the engine again after changing some of your project settings. So do be sure that if you see a pop-up like I have in the bottom right, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, that is still on the capture. Uh, you do want to restart because otherwise some things might be a little iffy. And of course, we're going to save all the selected. Now, as you are used to with any other widget, we need to add this to the viewport. So I'm going to simply go into my third person character real quick, because that already has a event that I have set up linked to begin play that adds some widgets to the viewport. So we can just create a new widget with that as well. Use our input icons widget for that. Set the owning player to the player controller and add it to the viewport. And this is a good start because we can see I'm using my mouse and keyboard here and I can see it's showing me the P. But then when I move over to my controller, it doesn't show anything. And that's because there's a little bit of a conflict going on here with the controller that the engine doesn't understand. So let's go back into the project settings, back in the common UI input settings. There's a thing that I skipped over and I skipped over it on purpose because it's an easy thing to miss. And that is the default gamepad name. If we come up here to the gamepad data, we can see our gamepad name is generic. Though in our project settings, the default gamepad name is Windows. So let's change that to the exact same. And now, if we go back into the game, we should see that now it does work. So those two things do need to match exactly. And of course, you can be entirely creative now that you understand how this works and how to do this and implement this into a bigger system and maybe drive these things even more programmatically if you wanted to. The basic idea though isn't that complicated once you know where to look. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page.